If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump. Yeah, yeah. For the first 46 minutes, we do our introductory conversation. First, Justin talks about his Organifi Green Hulk pancakes. Yeah, Hulk pancakes. That's a new thing, uh, making pancakes with the Organifi Green Juice so it's healthier and tastier. Your kids will love you. If you go to Organifi.com forward slash Mind Pump you will, and enter the code Mind Pump, you will get 20% off any Organifi supplement. Then we talk about my pre-workout stimulant caffeine bomb that I did yesterday. Uh, I actually was able to see into the future. Yeah. Then we talk about the butcher box sirloin cap and chicken. Let me tell you something right now. It's fucking delicious. Yeah, we didn't really identify exactly where it was on the cow, but it's delicious. It's amazing. It is. If you go to butcherbox.com forward slash mind pump, here is what you'll get. The free bacon is ending soon. For life. It's ending soon, though. Oh, get on there wow. now. Yeah. What? Free bacon for life. Yeah. $10 off your first order and free shipping. Then we talk about a new medical procedure that's getting popular uh, that uh, Adam's pr- interested in getting, labiaplasty. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> then we talk about the difference between men and women. We talk about fights, clicks, and nicotine vaping in high school. What? <laughs> talk about the times we cheated in school. Some <laughs> random stuff in here. And then we finish off that introductory part of the conversation talking about hot teachers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> then we get into the questions. The first question was, if you had to choose between the two, would you rather do bad movements or no movements? You have to pick one or the other. Which one? The next question was, this individual wants to know what natural things women can do to get their hormones to balance and be on point, you know, to maximize things like fat loss, muscle building, and overall health. And the next question was, how do you deal with a spouse or partner who has a very high level of need, much higher than your own? In other words, divorce them. What do you do with high a, maintenance. What do you do with a needy person? And finally, the last question, work. what is our favorite place that we've ever traveled to and why? why? Also, I don't, why? Know why I said, I don't know why I said it all breathy like yeah. that. <laughs> also, this month, our foundational program, the first MAPS program, the most popular MAPS program, MAPS Anabolic, is 50% off. It's under $60. If you get it this month, it's on sale. Go to mindpumpmedia.com, enroll in MAPS Anabolic, or check out our other MAPS programs, or check out our bundles. We have bundles of MAPS programs. We put them together and discount them and design them for specific goals, like do you want to be a sexy athlete? Do you want to build a bigger butt? Mm -hmm. Do you want to work out for a year and have expert exercise programming the entire time? We have bundles for all of those things. I do. You can find all of those, plus the 50% off MAPS Anabolic sale, at mindpumpmedia.com. T-shirt time! It's T-shirt time. Give away oh. them shirts, Doug. Third time's a charm. Hey, yeah. It's All right, we had 13 reviews. Now. Hold on, let me guess. Let me guess. Is one of them uh, have to do with a maple leaf? Yeah. You've got it. What's and the name? Nachos. Is there something about and Minecraft there's a nachos? Micropenis something guy. like that. Yeah. All right, no, read, read them off. Let's see if All our right. psychic can build <laughs> We're giving out four shirts. The first one happens to be the Maple Leaf Man. Whoa. Oh, Psychic it. Sal. Yeah, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> PWL 1984. Mm. Cubic Kenny. Minecraft Nacho. He measures everything in cubic. All of you are winners. Send a name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Send your shirt size, your shipping address, and we'll get that right out to you. Thank you. Did you finally try? Justin, you on? I'm in. You're I'm always in. last, am, bro. Why are you always in, last? Man. Were you always last yeah. growing up, too? You know, like, no. last picked. No. Obviously. No. Obviously <laughs> Always not. Always first. Obviously not. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Stupid. Hey, I was the one picking everybody. Hey, have you tried my green pancakes yet or what? My Hulk? Yours? My Hulk? Yeah. I was telling you, dude, I, like, I, uh, before it was the 4th of July, I was trying to do something special for the kids and, like, uh, we've done, we've done, like, we called them Hulk pancakes before. Okay. And uh, I used to do that just with, like, kale and, and spinach and we'd try and, like, mix that in with like banana and like whatever else we could to make it taste like somewhat uh you know (laughs) (laughs) edible you're tricking the kids tricking the kids always trying to trick the kids and then yeah and then i asked you about because you had mentioned using it 
uh, with, the or, with the Organifi green juice. Yes. Right? Because it gives it a nice kind of a minty So how does flavor. that work? You just add it to pancake mix? Yeah. No, no, no. You, it's a it's a different recipe than that. So they they have it on their their website exactly. We use almond you, flour. Yeah, we use almond flour. We use the um use the the green juice. You use a banana in there, and then uh, the chocolate chips. Was, yeah, so the chocolate was chips money. You, right, a little bit of chocolate chips in there because it's got a because mint, of the mint. Yeah, the minty yeah. flavor. Oh, oh, I gotta try that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So my youngest ate those up, dude. Like stacks of those things. So oh, see, I, gotta yeah, yeah. I gotta try that. Yeah. And that. the banana helps to kind of give it a little bit of texture if you want to add a little bit of that. But uh, well, your kids eat something like that sal uh probably yeah. probably especially if you if i covered it with a bunch of maple syrup oh you, did. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even need syrup dude and it's sweet cream. enough you know yeah. I mean? yeah. Yeah. yeah whipped cream would be a good call yeah or like honestly cool with the river. chocolate chips in there just and i only do a few of them in there and then just a little tiny bit of syrup over there and it's good yeah. just a drizzle yeah, yeah just it's a already drizzle. sweet just a little snoop dog but i it's haven't done sweet. that but i haven't done i didn't think about whipped cream or something like that that would yeah that, that would be bomb yeah, actually or like mm. cocoa whip or something that yeah. would be over that that's delicious that cocoa whip is off the chain. It is, dude. Yesterday I was exhausted, right? Sure. Uh, after work, I think everybody I know. I, was. We Should, all were kind of well bleh. because we were up in uh, we were up at uh, the that place up in Carmel for the fourth, and you right. know having a good time and going to bed late and you know talking you know all night or whatever. Yeah. And uh, so I was tired, but I had to work out. It was yesterday was my it was the second workout of the week for the chest, shoulder, tricep area on map split. Mm-hmm. So this is like unilateral stuff, and I'm starting to go heavy on it now because of my last week in this phase. Mm-hmm. But I was fucking tired, and you guys know I don't typically miss workouts. I just I hate doing it. So yeah. I'm like, oh, it's like, dude, I got to work out, but I'm exhausted. So what I did was I did something that I would never advise anybody else to do. Which this is what a terrible <laughs> this is what a this is what terrible trainers do. And uh, it's funny I train other people so much better than I train myself, right? So I'm exhausted. If I had a client that was really tired like that, I would tell them. Don't work out or just go easy. Just go yeah. easy. It's probably right. the smart thing to do. Yeah. But see, I'm Be training. reasonable. But this is just me. I'm training. <laughs> so on the way home, I stop over at the vitamin shop and I get the strongest looking pre, you know, pre-workout ready to drink. Oh, you did it. You told me you were going to do it and you hadn't done it in years. You did it. <laughs> I did, bro. Is that when you texted us that picture? I did. I, I took a picture of it, and part partly because I thought it would be funny, and partly because if I died, I, that way you guys would know, like, <laughs> oh, this is why he died. We, we got to tell. Yeah, we we'll know tell what everybody. company to yeah, go. Yeah, we know after. exactly what happened. Yeah. So I drank it, and um, basically was on fire for a few hours. Like I worked out really, really hard. Had trouble sleeping last night. I was so going to say that. So the- now I'm tired today. <laughs> God yeah. damn! What are they putting those that, things? That's the crack. That you know how much caffeine cocaine. was in it? How much? You know how much caffeine was in that thing? Two hundred milligrams. No, two hundred. That's for kids. Apparently, that's for kids. Three hundred and fifty. <laughs> wow. Of just caffeine. Holy shit. Wow. Then there was some other shit in there, and then I mean, there was all the stuff in there, but it also tasted like green apple. Like right. I don't know how that happened. No. <laughs> yeah. So I drank the whole thing, and I'm driving home, and I only live, I don't know, five minutes away from the vitamin shop. In the five minutes I'm driving home, I already feel little pricks of, on my skin. You know what I mean? Little. Uh, dee, 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 dee. Yeah. I was like, "Oh shit!" I hate that feeling. I when, made like, a mistake. Your, yeah, your heart rate's going too fast, and like you, like a little bit of shortness of breath, and you're just like, "Oh, oh no!" I just put on. Uh, That's what happens to me when I get too much caffeine. No, I listened to Sepultura yeah. and played that and worked out in my garage and like an asshole. Like a I think asshole. I think it's awesome to throw that in there every once in a while because we don't use it. I think when like there's those times where I'm like, okay, I could use a little, like ex- a, like a jolt. Yeah, a little jolt today because I just and and a lot of times it's more of the mental state I'm in than the physical state I'm in. Sometimes I'm just overwhelmed with work stuff and my mind's other places, and I just you want that dopamine rush, right? I do. I just want that rush before going in, and man, that just nothing gets me more focused. Now the only drawback of that is I literally cannot do it past like three o'clock. Like if it's, oh, it's hard to yeah, sleep, it fucks up your sleep. Yeah. Otherwise I'm fucking toast, dude. Well, I'm I know all night long. It's obvious why they're addicting. I mean, it's, they are fun. I could see that. And if I was a kid and I didn't know any better, that would be my go-to sure. all the time. Oh yeah. That's why they're so popular. I wonder, I wonder if since we've, I mean, it's been three years since we've been kind of talking trash about pre-workouts. I wonder what the, the in the increase of pre-workout has been over the last three years. What do you mean? The sales? Yeah. Like, is it increasing still? You think a whole section at the vitamin shop was pre workout. Yeah, I was gonna say there was a whole section it, there was because if it, it changed, it just rebranded. Yeah, if, if anything, it's it's just because they're addicting. It's it's addicting. It's fun. I get it. it. It creates the illusion that you had a better workout. And here's the deal: 
you do perform better in your workout, but does that translate into better gains? You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Right. Mm-hmm. I don't think it does, yeah. but it's fun. And I'm going to be honest. I, I do. You know, look, when we go to these fitness conventions, you, I could argue it does in the sense that like, okay, if you know, like you weren't going to get that workout in, had you not done that, you know, like, is it now? I think if you compared it to what you said, which I think you're right, is you know if you just took it easy, right? Like if you if you really were overstressed, you didn't sleep very well, you needed to get in the gym and you needed to train. I think your best bet is to still go train, but then go easy. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You don't need to fry your CNS, right? But I but I could argue that taking the the the, the pre workout, killing the workout, would be better than you not working out at all. So I, I don't know. I, maybe I, if I, I maybe for me because I never do it, so it's mm. like a one off. You know what I mean? But oh, a lot sh- of people take oh, it for sure for you. every workout. For, for well, sure. yeah, that's the thing. That's the problem. Is like uh. now you have another workout coming up. Like uh, you're gonna be like you're gonna want to have that same feeling again, and you're not gonna be able to recreate that. You know, so mm-hmm. it's like it's a temptation that's always gonna be there. Well, what I did was because I've done this before. While I have too many stimulants, I've done this probably a hundred times in my life where I've just overdone the stimulants and I'm like, ah, and I never t- seem to learn my lesson. So what I did to, what I've learned that helps bring me down is if I eat a large meal, like if I eat a large, especially a protein fat meal, it seems to bring my level down and, and kick in the parasympathetic. So I had, I, I grilled up the what is it? What do they? They call it something else, but it's a tri tip, basically from Butcher Box. Oh yeah. What do no, they call it? That's uh, the cap, the um, sirloin cap. Yeah. Is that what they call it? Yeah, I believe. it's a tri tip, right? It tastes just like a tri tip. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a very delicious cut of meat. I don't. I've never even heard of that cut of meat. So you it's, know, you should put it on the TV, Doug. And I know I've seen this on the internet before. So picture of the cow. Yes, there's they're... a picture of a cow with all the different cuts and where where they're at. I know the brisket is like right below the neck. So oh, I love brisket. Yeah. yeah. So that no, one I did. I did the like forever. I did the um, the cap. So I ate a whole bunch of that. I probably ate over a pound of meat, and then I had some uh, potato chips left over from the Fourth of July party. So I ate those two. How did you guys like? Some rice. I felt like you guys mm-hmm. didn't even say anything about my tri tip, man. I really. You did a good job, dude. How did you like that whole? You did a very good job. Well, it was a combination with the wifey there. You know, she knocked out the but, no, mushrooms but you, and the spinach. But you grilled it at the at the right amount. In the barbecue, and I actually learned something from you uh, with the barbecue, where mm. you turned off, you turned on the two sides, yeah, left the two in the middle off, and turned it into like an oven. Mm-hmm. So, oh, there's the beef chart. Where's the sirloin cap come from, Doug? See if you can find that. Oh, uh, right there. What and, is that? And the cap would be the top. I don't know. Probably. So top sirloin. Okay, so it's kind of near the. It's right above the, the junk area. <laughs> right, right before the leg, like the round, and then it goes. I think it would go up though, right? The cap makes sense. It would be the cap, the top of the circle, because the sirloin runs that whole quarter half of the the back quarter mm-hmm. half of the cow. It's probably the uh, top yeah. of it. Mm. I like my favorite cuts ribeye. What do you guys? So what's so? Do you guys keep the same um, order from Butcher Box every month, or do you change it every time? I haven't changed mine yet. Right now, I'm on the every other month delivery. Yeah, I haven't changed it yet, but I yeah. I'm, oh, I'm, we've I'm going to change it. Yeah, this next this next. <laughs> round. I think I'm going to change it. We and do the chicken. Eliminate we, chicken. We, oh, we do oh, the. Chicken. Chicken? I haven't yeah. done it. I've just done all. Beef. Uh, I get my chicken thighs from them now too. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. I, I I throw chicken in just because I like to mix it up. But at the same time, I'm not a big fan of chicken. Yeah, it's just a boring meat. Oh, mm-hmm. see, I love chicken thighs grilled on the barbecue. To me, is like oh, really? Oh, they're I could, good. But chicken thighs grilled on the barbecue, white rice and like some green veggie. Man, is like a staple breakfast or staple breakfast, staple meal for me for sure. <laughs> I would eat it for breakfast though too. Definitely thighs are better than than the breast. That breast was is just you know what's funny. What I think waste. for the first probably like eight years, maybe longer of my I fitness used to live career, off breast. was I. It's all I used to do was breast, man. Don't breast, look at me like that. What. That was, <laughs> that, you know, chicken breasts are so overrated. Can we oh, talk yeah. about that for a second? Yeah, that's, a, that's an overrated well, why, piece. Why, why have they been sold so much? Because they're, they're low lean. fat. Yeah. Mean. That's why. That's, yeah. that's why they're so overrated, though. I mean, it's like ch- chicken thighs, so much juicier, better meat. Like, you get the fat. You get the fats that are good for you. Yes. Yeah. You get better flavor. Oh. And you don't promote this this breeding of chickens that look mutant. Have you seen the chickens that they the breed? big ass chest. Oh, they look yeah. like. <laughs> they look like. <laughs> They look weird, bro. They, get they have like no neck. They're yeah, just, massive ugh. pecs, and they can barely walk. It's like, it's like they look at you like, "Sup, bro?" There was a guy that used to work out at um at the Golds on uh, on Monterey when I used to work out. I think I told you guys about him. I used to call him Captain uh, Captain Chicken Breast because not because he ate a lot of chicken breast, because he literally looked like 
all he ever worked out in his entire life was his chest. Yeah. <laughs> he had the There's sm- a lot of those guys. He had the smallest and skinniest arms. <laughs> he had skinny legs. <laughs> he had no mu- no back muscles, but he had he looked like a chicken, like the ones that Did were Did he bred. wear a tight green shirt all the time? He wore a blue one, I think. Oh, okay. And his girlfriend, I know who you're talking and about, his yeah. girlfriend would come follow him around, and he, she'd load he, his he, bench he, press for him. He'd walk around with the invisible. Lats. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and then when he <laughs> bench, because his chest was so big and his arms were so short and small, yeah, his range of motion was maybe like, four inches. Yeah, yeah, biggie, yeah. Biggie, 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 yeah. Biggie, biggie, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. And that's it. Yeah, it's funny how I always wonder like those guys. I I always wonder what happens to guys that that get stuck like that. Is it is it because you know, what what I think is uh, some woman at one point complimented you? Like, you got a yeah. nice chest, right? And that's all they worked I, on forever. I try to think of like what would have trapped me into like, doing something like that. Like, <laughs> that's what would trap me, right? If I I was in the middle of like building my physique and there was something I did, right? I just, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna focus on chest this month. Yeah. And some girl was like. Man, you just look so wow. great lately. You know, say like, okay, that's it, Such chest a forever. Big chest, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, I love your big yeah. chest. Like, oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. Like, what, I, like, 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 what sends a guy on like training? Just probably because he got compliments for, or maybe he's good at one lift. Like, maybe he's like a good bencher and he sucks at everything else. Oh, okay, I can oh, see. Yeah. Like, that's like, what like he said, all he has to go up is like barely an inch. Yeah, because his exercises, because he used to always go at the same time I did. So his workout consisted of flat bench dumbbell chest press, flat bench barbell bench press. Pec deck, hammer strength, chest press. It was always those four. Exercises. Not even any flies. Nothing. Wow. And his dumbbell press, he grab and he go, he grabbed the hundred, so he was relatively strong, right? Mm-hmm. But he would, he had no range of motion because he had this big, big chest and these short little arms. <laughs> so he'd come down and he'd kind of tip the dumbbells like this a little bit, angle them, so they kind of like boom. Oh yeah, bonk, so everything's bonk. in. Yeah. It was just really short, and his girlfriend would take one of the dumbbells from him whenever he'd be done, and her whole job was to follow him around, and. <laughs> Take it, yeah, dude. I'm gonna tell Katrina to do that yeah. for me. Just, <laughs> hey, baby, Did you uh, follow me around. Hold this towel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hand the weight. Yeah. <laughs> Hold this towel for me. <laughs> Hand the weights to me. Yeah. Speaking of which, so I was uh, someone. I was. You know how we. we oh, I talked to you guys about it. Um, uh, there, I, I want to try to. I'm looking at getting uh, specialists uh, either on our YouTube channel or maybe on the show. And talk about breast augmentation because so many female competitors, mm. you know, uh, get that kind of procedure done. That's an excellent idea. I think it would be a good idea mm-hmm. because there's good ways to do it, bad ways to do it. How does it compromise shoulder function and posture What's and all the that ramifications stuff? long term? Yeah, you know, if there is any. Some so, be- some so, before and after pics. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> of course. So I was looking some stuff up, and then I saw that there's another procedure that's gaining popularity. But no, labiaplasty. What? what? It's called labiaplasty. Why? They go in. It's it's been around, but it's gaining. It really is gaining traction. It's gaining traction. So was that reducing like the size of the lips, or it's is it- to make it's to make your vagina more aesthetic? Apparently, huh? I didn't know that that was a thing. You know, know what I mean? It's- so they go in and they they trim the labia and shape and whatever to make it look more. If I was aesthetic, a, if I was a chick, I'd be worried that that would mess with like yeah like you can't feel sensation yeah, like that's like, that's like where all the sensation is going on i mean that's that's i think i could totally see that bot that end up like you know like when girls that's one of the things when girls get the um breast implants they lose some, feeling they lose feeling in their nipples sometimes like and that's that's a hot spot man yeah what if all of a sudden like oh shit i can't yeah, really orgasm as well right yeah there, or huh? even if you still can it's just like diminished like that like if you would you do anything to your pecker if you knew that it would like at all if ten percent less good orgasms like would you do that? No, I mean we no. all got not even size. Well, not, I mean they're, not they're, even for two more inches. I mean there's penis enlargement surgery and I get that too. So I'm wondering if the women that get this how does that work? Penis enlargement surgery? Yeah, that's a good question. There's like still some inside. Right? I think they might. Yeah, like I think that's bit. what they do. They 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 pull some out that's still in your body. Mm. Did you know your dick's much bigger than you think? Dang. <laughs> so much potential there. So much potential. <laughs> just penis pumping. That's, that's yeah. the same concept. They're just pulling, you're just it, sucking right. it out right there. No, I don't think that's the same. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so they- I, Wow. I, I mean, I guess that what they do is they trim it. And don't do it, man. Feel, no. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. Why would you do that? Yeah. yeah. I guess you really have to either have a really bad situation or just be really hmm. insecure about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? To get something like that. But it's gaining popularity. Wow. Well, you know what I think You know what I think has caused that is the 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 I guess the ease of access to pornography. I, th- I you know cuz now women are probably comparing themselves right. 
Because I'm either that or women are with their friends and like, let me see. Oh, you remember when it was weird that nice. like people would have like a shaved situation down there? I remember that, when that became popular. That, yeah, like like that was like right when porn really was like mainstream. It's true. Yeah. Because before that, it was nobody shaved. No, yeah. you know, nobody shaved. In the '80s, you had to deal with a, like a serious fur. You know, Dude, I, re- I remember having. A, I remember there. having a girlfriend when I was a kid that was thinking about doing it, and I told her not to. Oh no! Don't leave that. Leave your big ass bush down there. <laughs> <laughs> did you really that like was a it? mistake? Yeah. <laughs> did, you, did you really like it, or did you say it because you you? I think at that. I think at that age, because this is my this is teenage years, right? I think. Uh, I liked it as a teenage boy because it was like it was a woman, and yeah. that was like and like having a shaved vagina for a teenage boy it was just like I made you feel like I'm doing something with a little girl. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm. So I think the 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 asking her to keep a big ass bush was like me going. Oh, like, I can see that. I yeah, guess, that's. Yeah. I mean, that's the, what I think. You know, yeah. I don't. It's hard to say. That was so long ago for me, but I do remember. I do remember that though. I remember her like it's a little wanting, more animalistic, wanting guess, to trim too. it. And I was like, no, nah, leave this big ass bush. <laughs> <laughs> big <laughs> ass bush. It's like, it's like a nice like pillow. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, I don't know what I was doing. It's uh, funny because I'm sure that there's people who know you who know who your first girlfriend was. <laughs> <laughs> Adam used to like, yeah, I guess yeah. Adam liked your bush. Yeah. <laughs> you know why they think that we have pubes to begin with? Because obviously if you look at a human naked, it's weird. We have hair. I would like, think it would to k- keep bacteria or disease or anything from getting stuff, in, get right? stuff getting in. No, that would only encourage things. Are you kidding me? It if traps you, things. No, it's like, I figured it's the same thing why we have hair in our nostrils and stuff like that. So you don't. You in, breathe through your yeah. nose, and that helps you, fr- prevents you from inhaling dirt and stuff. But you don't breathe through your, <laughs> through your, 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 <laughs> sure your you just keep it warm or what? No, no. Well, this is a theory. You don't, you don't think air comes in and out of there? Uh, I don't think you're supposed to breathe through it, though. Well, I don't, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't <laughs> think you, I don't think you practice breathing through, but air comes in and out <laughs> of there, buddy. That'd be weird. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> no, they think it's because the, the the hair, so same reason why we have hair under our armpits. Like, why do we have armpit hair? To keep our armpits warm? No. Oh. It's there because it traps our pheromones. And we oh. produce a lot of pheromones in our it armpits. It heightens the scent. Yes. I it see. We produce a lot of pheromones in our armpits and in our private areas. Mm. And so it holds all that in there so that you attract your other, you know, the other so people. So you're sort of, you know, wafting you know, choke out there to the world. Well, we try so hard as modern humans to eliminate all smell completely, but there's mm. there's an element of smell that is that we find attractive. Mm-hmm. We just don't put it, you know, we can't put our finger on it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so Sometimes you can. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. so you guys ready for a controversial? Oh, oh my God. I, I, think I, I, know I think I know what you're about to bring I didn't do up. controversial for, for a few episodes. Wow. Remember you guys this told is, me. This is going to be a... Well, you, I saw you stirred it up on your Insta story yeah, yesterday. Very, so, uh, how we, much fire did you get? To, not much. Very crazy. Not one. much, to be honest with you. Really? Not much. I thought I'd get more fire, but but I didn't. And it's I don't know why things like this are controversial. So the Marines did uh, a study to compare uh, men and women, and they found that women get injured more frequently, and they tend to shoot less accurately than men. Also. And and I think the reason why they're doing is this is because there's a push now for to for female, you know, soldiers to be, you know, in battle more or to include them in the field more mm. or whatever. And so they did this study. So they did an it, internal study with yeah. everybody. So yeah, this yeah. is like very current or was this like yeah, over this a span got, of like ten years? Oh, I don't know how long it took, but this is they just print they just did this right now. It was four hundred Marines mm. that they that they studied here and they found that Th- those are the things that they found. So I, I I posted that and wanted to see what people thought about it. And most people were like, yeah, there's, you know. So the study says there were notable differences in execution times, hmm. you know. Um, so, I mean, what do you guys think about that? What do you guys think about the the, the differences? Here's a, here's the thing, the point that I made, because I posted this in the forum, and it stirred up a little bit of a, co- of a discussion. Yeah, what was the comments? Um, I didn't get to read. Well, I had two – there were two um, – female army people who had served in in the military that were women Mm -hmm. and they were totally like yeah that's that's probably true they said you know uh, it's carrying all the gear that we have to carry Mm -hmm. or pulling someone off the field who got injured they're like you know generally women just aren't aren't going to be as good as it because we're not as you know as big or physically strong and so one of them said what i think needs to happen is we need to have a standard and it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman, you pass the standard. Mm-hmm. And and that's the way I look at it too. Because I think in some 
in some segments they change the standards if you're a man or a woman. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's kind of yeah. silly. Yeah, which I've I heard that. Yeah, and there's happened. there's some fire departments and police departments that mm-hmm. do that as well, mm-hmm. which I think is is crazy. It well, doesn't make yeah, any when, sense when it's life and death kind of situations. And I know it's it's definitely an uncomfortable topic, you know, because like we all want to look at ourselves as like completely equal on all levels, but there's like physical stature and there's just things that are obviously different. We're not though. Dude. I know we're not. We're not. Yeah. We're all different people, like, and especially men and women are definitely different. We're yeah. not, we're not equal, and there's going to be things that men are better at. There's going to be things that women are better at. There's going to be things that tall right. people are good at. There's going to be things that short people are good at. Bottom right. line, and it, when it comes to things that are fucking serving us or serving our country or potentially saving lives, I want the best man or woman in that position. Yeah, yeah. I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's so silly it's to poli- me. We- I think it's just political correctness run amok like when you have these departments these like there's some police and and fire departments that do this they give different standards for men and for women yeah and i'm not i don't care you know man woman whatever you you figure out what the standard is and then whoever is doing the job should be able to to stick with it it is and the point that i made in the forum about this was there are clear general there are clear general differences between men and women that we've established now through decades of research, okay? General. And these and when, when remember we're talking about group. We're talking about a big group like women and men. But when you go down to the individual, it starts to break down because mm-hmm. there's such a massive <clears throat> variance. For example, I know women who can lift more weight than we can. I know women who are stronger than we are. Right. There's there's top well, there's level always outliers. That well, um, my point is is that it, it, when we look at these general tests Really, what's the point of that? At the end of the day, it's it's the individual. Mm-hmm. Here's your ta- here's your here's what you need to pass. Right, you either pass it or you don't. What yeah. has happened instead is in some of these areas, in some of these departments, is they want to be so politically correct that rather than saying the the right thing, which is we're going to be blind to gender. Mm-hmm. Here's your here's your uh, your standards: pass or fail, and it's, it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. Mm-hmm. That's the right thing to do, and that's actually the anti-sexist mm-hmm. or non-sexist thing to do. Instead, what they do is they look at a police department or a fire department or whatever, and they say, "Oh, ninety percent or ninety-five percent are this gender." And it's, this is, by the way, this doesn't happen with female-dominated uh, spaces. Like they don't look at nursing or teaching and say the same thing, which is hilarious. Like they don't look at teachers and go, "Hey, most teachers are women." We need to change the standards and get more men. And they don't do that. They only do that with, ma- with male-dominated ones. But they'll look at it and say, "Okay, it's ninety-five percent men. We need to make, we need to create or or figure out a way to get more women to be able to fill this this need or whatever, so that it's more equal." And then the way they do it is by changing the standards. That doesn't make any sense at all. Yeah, but I don't think this is controversial. The part that was that did I did you have anybody on the forum that actually d- disagreed? Or? No, I had I had one message from someone. I, who I said, feel like that one's too easy because I feel like that's not. I mean, it is. You thought it was controversial, but well, I, the part that I thought would be controversial wasn't the getting injured and strength thing because I feel like that nobody debates that because it's too obvious. Right. Like it's too obvious, right? Yeah. The one that I thought people would have a problem with was the shooting accuracy one. Mm. Because it says that that do you it, think do it you, said that men check this out it said that men with no shooting experience many times would shoot more accurately than women with shooting experience it, according <laughs> to the study. Oh, now here's the deal again it breaks down at the individual level because at the, the bottom line is you could take a, a, an individual and they could be amazing man or woman, but generally speaking, I, this you know an anthropologist and scientists have talked about this. There's a certain type of intelligence that. Uh, that men and women have evolved to have. For example, women verbally are ten, generally tend to score higher than men verbally. They're better communicators. Um, they're also can read signs of feeling and empathy much better than men can. This is just general. Of course, there's men that are much better than some women and vice versa, but generally speaking, they do better. When it comes to noticing movement and at accuracy, uh, men tend to do better. And it makes sense, of course, we're guessing, but it makes sense if you consider men were the hunters that we probably were like selected. It's hardwired somewhere. Yeah, yeah that we were, there was some selection going on where men had to be better at throwing a spear or noticing, you know, patterns and movement in the distance and focusing on it so we could hunt or whatever. Yeah. Whereas, you know, uh, women notice. And here's another one: women are much better at um, at uh, noticing uh, shades of colors, different colors. They also have a um, more keen sense of smell. 
<laughs> which again makes sense if they were the ones that were gathering that they could pick out the the fruit that wasn't poisonous or the ripe whatever or they could smell something and see like okay this is safe to eat or this isn't no safe that's to eat. true i remember we were talking about uh, just walking as we we're walking through nature and we we stopped for a second to look like oh wow look at this vibrant color didn't even notice it walking through there a few times until we stopped and really like paid attention and it is something that unless you know you're you're constantly conditioning your your brain and your eyes to like pay attention to it's like you, you categorize everything to be more efficient well this just, is this is exactly why i have katrina do all the grocery shopping and why i don't come mm. I know you don't she need picks me. out better food than yeah, me. Yeah, absolutely. I think all that food's safe. <laughs> yeah, do you do the hunting, Adam? Yeah, I was like, yeah. hey, if we ever have the, the hunt, hunting. I'll be the one to do it. Uh, you know what I'm saying? He just, he if just, we ever do. He throws a rock at the stake. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> hey, you know, how, how, Speared it. The, how is this um, different than something like affirmative action? That it isn't. It isn't. Something like that does something very similar, and it's based off of race or sex. Because that's and, what it sounds like to me when you when you explain like what they're doing. It's like, well, how's that any different than like you know giving someone a job based off of? Well, some colleges, for example, if or, you're, or let somebody into a college. Right? Well, some colleges, for example, if you're of a certain ethnicity, like uh, Asian, for example, if you're Asian, you have to score higher on tests than you do uh, if you're white or another uh, race. So if you're Asian, it's harder to get in. To certain colleges, because why? They would say your your race is overrepresented. There's a lot more Asians with better scores or whatever. I hate that they even do. I I, I don't I know. Yeah. Why do they just lump everybody into groups instead of just taking each case? It's like they're trying so hard individually. They're trying so hard to not be racist and discriminatory, yeah. and the way they're doing it is by becoming racist and discriminatory. I know. So exactly. trip, so trip on this. So Enzo was listening to our episode that we just did recently about the yearbooks. And remember we were talking about, you know, clicks in high school? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I says there's no clicks. Yeah, you, but you know you say that they are? People what? hang out by race? By race. Yeah. That's... Uh, what? Yeah. Yeah. That's that's, that's always kind of happened a little bit, right? Well, not for yeah. me, because we didn't... Well, I mean, where I grew up, I was I was in... Uh, it was predominantly all white, and I had... There was a... Maybe there was three black kids in the school. Maybe there was eight to ten Asian kids in the school mm -hmm. and the rest were like white kids. Really? So you separated by click for sure, like what you were whatever you were into. Where I went yeah. to and, and it didn't matter what race you were, so the Asian kid could have been hanging out yeah. with the nerds. Or yeah, it was hanging. predominantly just like, yeah, whatever your in <clears throat> interests were the yeah. most. Like, yeah, it was pretty diverse. So that's that, weird to it, me. I couldn't imagine being on my high school campus yeah. like in the in the area and looking around it's and like being like prison. Just be like right. Hey another white guy. Hey go hey, hang out with me. Yeah. Right. That's kind of weird. weird. That's that's weird to now, me. Now do you think I think it's more normal to like gravitate towards the things well, that you're yeah, interested that feels in. Like, well, yeah. here's a good, here's a good, uh, this is a great discussion. Do you think it's because the kids want to hang out with the same race or do you think it's because people of the same race tend to uh, relate to each other better because like, for example, if I run into a bunch of first generation Americans who have Italian or Sicilian parents, we're probably going to have more in common hmm. because of it. Do you think it's because of that or do you think it's just because of the race? No, I think it's because of what you just said. Maybe, right? Yeah, of course, because the things in high school that are you know, awkward or weird, like for each other. Like if you come, if like you said, if you're first generation coming over here, like you may dress different, your lunch that is packed for you is probably different. Yeah. yeah. You know Big what I'm saying? Sauce sandwich. Right, right. The thing, the things that, the things that your culture has already implemented, that were implemented into your lifestyle at a very early age before you even got to this school that's like this, I'm sure you're going to have more in common with that. So I, I could see that. I still mm. just think it's really weird. Yeah, yeah, it's he said. You know strange. the other, you know the other thing he said. What? You know he's seventeen, right? So he's a he's a real young kid. He's never seen a fight, ever, what? ever seen a fight. See huh? that that's mind boggling to me. He's Why? never seen a there fight. So many fights. No growing. fights in elementary school, junior high, or high school. He's what? never seen one. Why? Never. <laughs> I know, right? It was like every week there was at least one or two. Like we would go follow back behind this well, church and people would duke it out. Isn't that book you're reading, iGen, talking about how they just they do less of that stuff? Like there's less fighting, less violence. Yeah, like, no, it does talk about that, but I didn't think it was that less. Where like you, well, he's just, also going to he also goes to like a, like a Los kind Gatos. of upper, yeah, like Los, no, no, Saratoga. Oh, okay, high school, but. But I, even I remember, though, even you know the, the yeah, upper yeah. class high schools or whatever, they would sure. still have fights and oh, stuff. Oh yeah, there was there was yeah, stuff. Yeah, no, there was lots going of, down. My, look, my kids have been going. My kid, my son's twelve, and there's one scuffle that mm. happened at his school, and it wasn't even a fight. It was a kid said something to another kid, and then he pushed him. Yeah, 
and it was a big deal. No, oh. what's interesting you bring that up because that happened every day. <laughs> my, one every of my day. yeah, one of my friends uh, was coaching basketball for my oldest, and I went to school with him, and we were talking about because we actually got in a fight, me and him, when we were younger, growing up, and he was like apologizing to me for that. I'm like apologizing. We were kids. We were fighting. We didn't know what the fuck we were doing. You know, like like he's like, yeah, I just was thinking about that because like his kid, like same age as my oldest. Like they're just so nice to each other. Like everybody is like he he notices this because he works you know within the schools and everything. And like every every kid is like very um, conscious of you know other kids' feelings and all this. It's he's like it's a totally different vibe. And I'm like, what? Yeah, well, it, it might be because of where he's at, you know. Because that's I'm curious. Yeah, maybe my my buddy is a prince or vice principal over in like Merced, mm -hmm. right? That area or Turlock area, right? And it's. A little different like he's yeah. constantly there's somebody in in his office oh, I'm sure yeah. every, almost every day over some crazy shit they've had gang stuff they've had guns they've had they've had a lot of crazy really oh yeah, yeah. And, so you know the big thing that he says is one of i the, know violence is down overall though yeah overall overall it yeah, is down. for it's sure a, it's actually down overall in all categories gun violence mm -hmm. uh, assault like just generally it seems like society's just getting better and better. And better. I, you know what? You know what? Enzo was also saying is that the popular thing are those little cartridges that go into laptops. They're they're disguised as uh, uh, memory cards, mm -hmm. uh, whatever you call them. Yeah, and but they're they? little USB. But they're, it's nicotine hits. Wow! So all the kids are on like nicotine. That's like the big. What do you mean nicotine hits? They're vapes. Yeah. Oh. They're they're little they're little tiny cartridges that look just like memory cards that go into your USB drive or whatever of your computer your laptop and they're and they're yeah. hitting them in class. Kids are tobacco. So, kids are so funny. Yeah. Like they do it because it's like sneaky. Yeah. Because yeah, if yeah. they if they were allowed to do that, nobody would be puffing on a nicotine, you know, USB drive. Nobody, <laughs> <laughs> nobody would on. care. You know I didn't mean? even no. know that existed until he showed me. No. Wow. Yeah. It's like a, did you guys ever come up with like clever ways to sneak things into school? Did you guys ever do anything um, like that? I just remember those calculators, like you had to memorize all these stupid ass formulas. And so there was like on the sleeve of it, uh, <laughs> was a couple of formulas I would write. Everybody was like, oh, sweet. Like it would cheat. I definitely, this is the one thing I did. I remember cheating. I put like formulas on the back of this like sleeve of the um, calculator because you could just slide it down and look at it. Boom. Psh, and then you had your formula. Wow. Yeah. Because uh, uh, like memorizing was the... Literally, like, the whole class was just about memorizing. It was so obnoxious to me. So here's how I cheated one time with my friend. We both wrote the answers on a piece of paper and taped it to the bottom of our shoe because <laughs> he sat next to me. Yeah. And so then we would just cross our legs, and he would look at my shoe, and I'd look at his shoe, and then nice, we would, and then we would cheat. <laughs> that's that's the move. Yeah. That's but yeah. pretty solid. I did. I didn't do. I didn't do much cheating in school. You know. I think I got caught one time maybe, and I remember that was when I became real quick and savvy to the teachers do, a lot of our teachers would give like three different tests in different orders. So if you'd copied, it was like super fast and obvious, right? So all the questions were out of order between every kid, every other kid, right? So yeah. if you copied a kid that was within your eyeball range and you got your test back, it's like you got, you obviously copied the kid over here that had the test A and you had test B. Uh, and yeah. so our teachers would do shit like that. So, yeah, that. we couldn't really do stuff like that. Dude, but, there was this kid in my school who got who turned himself up in for cheating. You want to know why? What? So there was a teacher's aide uh, for, this, for this class, and the teacher's aide had – because it was a um, multiple choice, so you just fill in the bubbles. Mm -hmm. And what teachers have is they have this, like, this, uh, what is it called? The key or whatever. Yeah, and it yeah. shows the pattern. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the teacher's aide copied this key and then sold it to this guy that, w that was in my class. So this kid had the pattern. So when he did the test, he filled out the pattern. Turns in the test. A week later, whatever, we get the test back. He gets all of them wrong. An F. Yeah. Do you know why? Because the pattern was off. He li he lined it up wrong. Yeah. Oh, man. He lined it up wrong by one. So instead of like, you know. So every answer was exactly one off. Was exactly one off. So dude. he turned himself in hoping that what? He turned himself. Well, most take the test yeah. again. Most teachers know are smart enough to know that that kid cheated too. Because if you get a, yeah. like, it's almost impossible to get a zero. Like you can, like if you blindly. You have to purposely them, like make it off. Yeah, right? exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like yeah. you would literally. That's a good point. I wonder if they're waiting for him. Like, no. Oh, for yeah. sure. A teacher would. 
would, that, and that's what I mean well, by even how. Even then, he's got to, he has to have the F. That's how know? they would yeah. fuck you. That's the how F. they would fuck you with these three tests. A, B, and C would all be one off. Yeah. And so that's how a teacher would know right away if you cheated because they're like, oh, yeah, look at all the right answers for the A <laughs> test, but you had the B test, kid. Oh. Yeah. So it would fuck you big time. And you got them all wrong then, you know? So Jeez. I think that's really clever. Did you guys get nervous before tests? Uh no no nah, I was yeah. a, I was a good test taker yeah, some of the yeah. yeah I was a good test taker it, 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 like the SAT and all that I think I was nervous for oh that. yeah you did all that I yeah. never took the SAT yeah, I took yeah. SAT and did the, you take the SAT yeah mm-hmm. yeah because I didn't go to no, college so there's stuff I, yeah. I knew I wasn't you know what I did do though I didn't cheat or do I didn't really do much but I did one year so this was my this was hilarious I forgot all of this my biology teacher you know we used to it, we do it we did a lot of like. Uh, shit on the tv right there was always like a, sh- a thing we had to watch before we did a lab or some shit and uh i i went down and got a universal remote and i, pro- <laughs> and, I and i programmed, and programmed, and I programmed it right so <laughs> i would keep i would keep it in my backpack and then yeah. when we get there to work today we'd be watching tv for like five or ten minutes right there, <laughs> change the channel real quick yeah and then he had to go up there and he's, he's got the he's got his own remote yeah. so he's like you know, I know he, no kid has the remote, so it never dawned on him that I had a universal remote. And I would do it just enough to where he couldn't figure it out. Like, if yeah. I kept doing it, like, a lot, like, it'd be obvious, like, okay, something's going on here. But I would just fuck with him, like, every- yeah. <laughs> and I only had a couple buddies in the class that knew what was going on. And so we, awesome. would, we would be snickering what the whole time. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I, I wouldn't get nervous, but if they gave us the opportunity, sometimes teachers would give us the option, and never nobody would ever take this option, but they'd say... You can either do the written test or you could do the oral test. And every kid was like, no oral test. I don't want to do the oral test. I was always Sal like- Sal loves oral. Oh, yeah. Give me- <laughs> yeah. Sal loves oral. Yeah. Give him the oral. Give me the oral. Yeah. No, give me the oral test because I knew I could stand up in front of the class and I could make it sound like I knew what I was talking <laughs> yeah, about. I, oh, wow. I was and definitely I was, the opposite of every that. Every time. You yeah. did that when you were younger, huh? Oh, no, yeah. Wow. I remember specifically, I remember specifically one- we were supposed to do a uh, a, a full report on uh, the book uh, Lord of the Ring. Uh, it's not Lord of the Ring, excuse me. Uh, the Lord Hobbit. of the Flies. Oh, Lord of the Flies. Lord of the Flies. And the day before, I, I didn't read a single page yeah. of this book at what all. Was that yeah. freshman year? That's freshman year book, right? I don't remember. Yeah, it's freshman. It was. Bro, but that's how I took tests. I would understand patterns. The teacher would, you know, how they would like construct the test, and then I would break that down, and then I, I wouldn't even do any of the work. <laughs> you know, that was like half of my plan was to figure out how much, like, how good a grade I could get with doing the least amount of work. You know what? Which, I always... which is a, that's the sign of an entrepreneur. <laughs> <laughs> it is right. It's so weird yeah. though. Like, I, that, I, that's totally why. I didn't learn anything, that's, but that's I was just like, yeah, I was just like, this is silly. Like, I could, I could get an A still. Watch, you know, <laughs> and I would figure it out. No, I, I stood up at the class. We were doing the report, and I picked the oral re- report the day before. Never read the book, so I had my dad rent me the movie. I watched Lord of the Flies on on TV. Stood oh, there up you on, go. Stood up in the front of the class, got a standing ovation from the teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Because I, because why? Because oh, I, shit, I'm good at this. I connected, yeah. I connected the the theme of the story of Lord of the Flies to modern life, and I'm like this, you know. Oh. And I just went all philosophical. Oh, I, just wow. went, I went oh, off, dude. Yeah, there you go. And the teacher stood up, and she's like, "Excellent nice. job, Sal. I yeah. can tell you really like the book." And I'm, Psh, you don't even have the book. <laughs> I don't even have it. Lady. I don't even have the book. Yeah. That was. Pure. I don't know if I, I'm trying to think what book right I actually cuff. actually read all the way through from cover to cover in high school. Hmm. I can't think of one. Oh, really? Yeah. Like of mice of men. You want to know what books? Right I, you want to know? I, you guys are about to. You're gonna make fun of me, but whatever. You know mm. what books I read cover to cover? What? My history books, the actual textbooks that they'd give us. Oh yeah. You know what's funny? I would be into reading that now. Yeah. Like your social studies books and stuff like oh, that. Oh, I loved them. Yeah. I read all the philosophy books. I was not into. Oh, them. did you? Yeah. I was not in social studies. I hated. We used oh. to have, and the, I remember those worksheets that we used to get every single fucking day for homework. You had to go through a chapter and go back and fill out all the worksheets. <sighs> Ugh. I go straight to the glossary and just fucking figure out the words and just fill it in. <laughs> it's yeah. so stupid because they don't really teach you anything that's important. They just teach you dates and what happened yeah. instead of like why did this happen? Right, like right. what's the what, how does this apply to today and why is this important? No, it's about like what, you know what date was the Boston Tea Party? Well, yeah. a lot of school is just memorization, dude. All yeah. of it. Yeah. All of it is. Yeah, a lot of it really it really is. I didn't get a All lot of teachers that would explain the the why yeah, behind. There was no discussion there. It was mm. just like learn this and then mm. they'd throw a, like a manual at you and you had to memorize it. Oh, and in the 7th or 8th grade, Mr. Sweeney, I think his name was terrible teacher. Terrible. All he would do is we would get into class He'd put up, he had one of those projectors or whatever where you put the clear plastic whatever over yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And he'd say, all right, read uh, chapters one, two, and three, and then answer these questions. And then he'd sit at his desk. 
<laughs> and he would do nothing. And every once in a while, he would stand up and yeah. read from the chapter. He was literally a fucking placeholder for a teacher. That's what he was. Yeah. So what he, he used to, I used to piss him off like crazy because I never paid attention. And so I'd be in the back reading all the way through the, the history book because I thought it was fascinating. I'd just be reading. Yeah. And the way he would try and get me, and he must have done this like 10 times, is he would be reading and whatever, and you know he'd try and engage people. Mm-hmm. And I'd just be in the back reading my own self. And then all of a sudden I'd hear, so Sal, what do you think of blah, 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 blah? Like, ha, I got you. And I'd answer the right answer. And he'd look at me like, fuck. <laughs> so, I'm already re- I already read that part, dude, like a week ago. Yeah. <laughs> fuck. I probably already told this, but that was like my English class where this Miss Visser, she would make us read basically the entire class without discussion. And so everybody would get a part and we would go through, I think it was um, like I was Mercutio, you know, from Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. I would just like opt in to like read something because I wanted to do something. I didn't want to yeah. just sit there. And uh, so I remember going, had to go into the principal because I basically read the whole part and acted it out with my Arctic Breeze character, basically. <laughs> what? You read so, it like that? Yeah, just like that. And like everybody was dying, you know, and then, and then the teacher got really pissed off at me and, and was just like, you're not coming back the rest of the day. And I'm like, <laughs> like, fine. Go to the office. <laughs> you know, like... Fine. I just got really bored, dude. You, I right now, I literally just cringed because I could. I took myself back to being in a classroom and that, that silence of the teachers that used to make you do that, where it would be like, "We're going to read a couple chapters." Like that, I've been in that situation, and yeah, that has to be up there with some of the most awful moments as a kid growing up of having to sit in a room and like looking up at the clock, so unproductive, looking up at the clock every five minutes. Like, God damn, I wish yeah. that thing would go faster. Right. It was just and and the whole room silent. And all you could hear is the occasional page turn. You know, yeah. <laughs> how many it. minds? I mean, how many? It's almost Ugh. like it's almost like people succeed in spite of the shitty education yeah. system. You know what I mean? <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, oh wow, you went through that and uh, you're successful. Good for you. Well, that I think I think that's where so much of it is weighs on the parents, right? Like as far as like your how you follow up with your kids afterwards. I think that. That's everything, right? Like being able to have the discussions with your kids after after the stimulating get, conversation. Yeah, mm-hmm. Dude, absolutely. Like to me, that and yeah. the kids that their parents that didn't mm-hmm. give a fuck about that and didn't mm-hmm. do that are probably the same kids. Did you got? Did you guys ever have an attractive female teacher? Never. Yeah. Really? Ever. That sucks. So. Lame. We had a French teacher. I'm not going to say her name. I've trained yeah. a lot of them. I was every time I trained one, I'd be like, God damn, where were you when I was a kid, dude? I would have definitely done my homework. Oh no, we had one, and she wasn't even. We had a substitute. Did you? Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> Whoa. She was a fox. <laughs> wow. Yeah. You, it, well, it's let me tell you, dude. Well, you guys know this. You got a bunch of 15 or 14 year old, 15 year old dudes whose testosterone levels have reached epic proportions yeah. hot teachers tell me what to do i am listening well yeah. it's just i am listening uh, we had this one you have my attention we had this one french teacher i won't say her name because she's local and i think she's still teaching but she and she wasn't super attractive she was just a woman this is like yeah. 25 years ago bro she's probably not as hot as i know you don't uh, and that's a, yeah she's you don't dead. necessarily need <laughs> to be like like hot hot you just need to be like attractive teacher well, hot well yeah. so you need to be teacher hot. well i don't so know there's, dude there's, because there's different, there's different levels there's of difference yeah, i don't know exactly. because i see these fucking news reports with these female teachers who, who are being inappropriate with their male students and some of, and some of them are like downright smoking have yeah. you seen some of these? Yeah, that's like I never had a teacher like that. I'm yeah. like, yeah. wow. Yeah, but no, I this this particular teacher, she would always wear these like silk tops or whatever, and she just had the most pointy nipples. Wow. Like, whoa. Yeah, oh, and that's, they would poke out. That's distracting. And so distracting. Like yeah. every guy in there was just like, oh. Like, and then she'd come over to help. You know, like with your thing or whatever, mm-hmm. with your, whatever you're working with your on. Thing? Yeah. With your thing. <laughs> and so she'd lean over. Please help me with my thing, yeah, please. Yeah, help me. So you're sitting at your desk, right? And you'd yes. raise your hand and you'd say, you know, I'm not going to say her name, but we'd call her Madame, whatever her name was, because you know, I'm gonna, I don't want to yeah. call her out. <laughs> hey, so I'd and say, she's speaking in French? Yeah, yeah in wow. French. Madame, yeah. whatever. She'd know walk what over. About she'd walk French. over and she'd lean over you and her nipple would be like, right there. <laughs> and then you, and the, you'd for sure, the guys in there, for sure, we knew why we'd call her over. I'd be yeah, like, yeah. uh... Can you help me with number four? And then every, all the guys would be like... Well, it was the worst because our substitute teacher, I remember her coming in and she would wear those like kind of fuzzy um, sweatshirts or sweaters. Mm. And like, yeah, she had she was very well you know, developed. And uh, it was distracting. <laughs> she, she was very mature. She was very... <laughs> they were there, right? And um, 
and she would, she would come in to, one time to, to kind of take over and teach us like sex ed and everything. I'm like, oh my God, really? She taught you sex ed? Yeah, but it was wow. like a follow-up series of what already, and so she was a little uncomfortable with it too, and all the guys in there were just like, oh my God, like we just sat there, like listened to her talk about it, and it was... Yeah, it was epic. Painful. Did you see? Yeah. Did you see Enzo the other day in the meeting? His first meeting that he was in with all oh, of us. Yeah. He raised his hand. Uh, <laughs> he raised his hand. <laughs> <laughs> I died laughing inside. You know that. what I'm saying? He's a good yeah. kid. Yeah, we were all talking. And everyone's going back and forth the meeting. Then like Enzo raises his hand. Like, can yeah. I? Yeah. Can I say something? It's yeah. funny. No. We, we think about it though. Like, you know, at one point you were trained to do that same thing too, right? Like, right, if you were in in a in a group of people yeah. and you wanted to talk yeah. like, that. I got something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> waiting like patiently yeah. calling. Next time he does it, the next don't group. call him. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I'm gonna look no. like look past him. Just go around the room. Right. Anybody? Anybody have anything? Anybody to say? Else? Anybody have any questions? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody? Oh, good, great. Yeah. I'm glad. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody? Anybody out there? Yeah. Yeah. There's five of us in the room. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll high five that hand. What's up, man? Good job. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good kid. It's good having. It's, I like having somebody that age. Oh, good job, Adam. Yeah. I like having someone that age uh, on staff because it's always fun. Oh no, it's good for us. Yeah, it's always fun. No, sure. we learn a lot. It's like it's interesting. Yeah. It reminds me of just how old we are. Yeah. For sure. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use the coupon code MindPump for 20% off at checkout. Our first question is from Mike Lunares. Bad movement or no movement? If you had to choose between the two, which would you each pick? Uh, shout out to our boy, Mikey. That's what up, Mikey? Hey, Mike. That's a good question. No, that is a cool question. That's very thought-provoking, I think. Yeah, there's a, there's, there's a, there's a huge misconception with, with movement in which, which if you're moving, you're creating a recruitment pattern. If you're moving... You're developing certain muscles. If you're moving, you're training your body to do something. Mm -hmm. Now, that is also true with no movement, okay? If you're not moving, you're also creating recruitment patterns or promoting some. If you're not moving, you're also promoting some muscles to become atrophied. If you're not moving, you're also causing dysfunction. So mm -hmm. the reality is- They're both like bad intertwined. Movement, yeah, bad movement and no movement, both of them- will cause problems. Yeah. I think bad movement in bad movement we can we can categorize some are as being totally dangerous and some just being not great for you. <clears throat> but f aside from the super dangerous bad movement stuff where you actually injure yourself, bad movement may be better than no movement because at least you're moving and you're yeah. you're you know you're burning calories at least internally things are, are yeah. functioning, mm -hmm. you know, at least by the the movement process, but yeah, I think that as far, as far as like um, getting to a place where you're gonna face pain or injury or you know both scenarios, you're gonna you're gonna come to a halt, you know, with with, with either the, either of those scenarios. So I don't I don't really see like too much of a preference in either direction, other than I would probably go with the bad movement just because I'm moving, and well, that's that's really all I could say. Because he said movement, I, I would say bad movement. If it was like exercising, like or ex or a, a lift or something, right? Like what's better, like bad squats or no squats, right? Something like that, then maybe there's a different, there's a different answer to this. Hmm. But otherwise, I think moving in general is better than not moving at all. If it's just straight up, you know, to move or not to move, and even if your movement, like for example, like I when I see this all the time, right? Like you see the the 80 year old man that, that lives down my neighborhood and he's his posture is so bad that he's like looking straight down at the ground and he's out there walking and you know you look at him and you go like oh my god his posture is so fucked up but then i also look at him and like good for him that he's getting out and he's still walking and he's still moving because somebody with that fucked up of posture I could easily see them being like, oh, I'm in so much pain all the time. Mm -hmm. I have bad posture. I shouldn't be, every time I walk, it ends up hurting my low back mm -hmm. and all these things where I think you'd be in a, a much worse position than to not move whatsoever. Now, if we were to take this to like a squat or like something like that, you know, do I think it's better to, you know, not load a barbell and get under there and squat with bad mechanics versus, you know, squat, not squatting at all? 
uh, yeah, I think not squatting at all is better than putting a bunch of weight on your back and then squatting squatting with really bad bad patterns. Well, yeah, the, that's it, a different scenario. At the end of the day, I mean, well, here's the deal: your body adapts to whatever you do and don't do. That's what's yeah. that's the important point that I'm trying to make here. It's not like if you don't do anything, then nothing happens. If you don't do anything, a lot of things happen. Right. Yeah, you and, start shutting things down. And no movement is very, very bad for you. Now, why would a bad squat be worse than not squatting at all? I'll tell you why. Because you hurt yourself, which then results in no movement. Right. No movement is the worst thing you could po- – it's one of the worst things you could possibly do for your body. If you don't believe me, you can play this experiment on yourself. Get in bed. Don't leave your bed for a week or two weeks. And watch how quickly – your health yeah. and your state of mind yeah. declines. Well, isn't the I mean the problem with breaking your hips when you're older? I mean, isn't it's the rapid decline, uh, you know, of health and 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 that right visibly in front of you, you see, um, just the health just go completely because of the non movement as a result. Like they're not motivated to get up and down. They're not motivated to get you know circulation and and then it's just like and then the defeated sort of mindset that. Um, happens as a result as well. It just all is just, just rapid decline of the entire system. Well, when was the last time you had a a, a, a limb in a cast, right? Mm-hmm. For mm-hmm. you know, even if you even if you sprain something and you have it in a brace for two weeks, take that brace off and you'll be. Yeah. I, the first time I ever did it, I was I was shocked at how much muscle I lost. It was actually I didn't expect that because I'd never done that before. Mm-hmm. I take the brace off and my muscle's gone. And it looks scary. Now, of course, it comes back when you move and exercise it. But that just goes to show you that your your body's adapting always, wow. always. There is no there is no stagnant. There is no stable baseline. It's either adapting in a favorable way or adapting in an unfavorable way or a mix of the both. Mm-hmm. Either way, though, there's something that's always happened. So that's always happening. So, you know, and like I said, to ask a question like this, like if you sit down and you don't move. That is one of the most unhealthy things you could do, not only for your body, but also for your mind. If you you really want to see your mind go in, in a bad place, lock yourself in a room and on a bed and stay in there for, you know, just a few days. Even I, I know how I feel when I'm sick and I can't and I stay in, on a couch, yeah. and how that fucks well, with my head. Drives you know? me crazy. Oh, it's absolutely terrible. Now, of course, the the best answer is is good movement. You know, mm. do doing good movement. But you know, here's the deal, like. You don't have to, and we talk a lot about expert, you know, exercise programming and workouts and the best, you know, exercises and how to do them right and this, that, and the other. But the average person, if the average person who just wants just overall health, doesn't really care about performance, doesn't want to build lots of muscle, wants to, doesn't need to look super lean, just want to maintain a good, healthy, you know, body for longevity, you can get away with, you know, a few exercises like a barbell squat. You know, is one of them a deadlift, an overhead press, maybe a row, maybe a chest press. Get really good at those, and and you know maybe variations of them, and get good at movement. And you're gonna have good, you know, you'll you'll maintain decent mobility for the rest of your life. On the flip side, if somebody does nothing at all and just goes to work, sits down at work, and drives home and sits down at home, if you don't use it, you lose it, man. Quick, yeah. I people would be shocked. I'll tell you what, pers- people who are trainers who are listening know exactly what I'm talking about. You get the average the average age of a client who hires a personal trainer is probably 40 something, right? Wouldn't you agree? Like late 30s, maybe early to mid 40s probably, right? Cuz yeah. they have expendable income. At that time at that age you're you're you value hiring a professional more than if you're 20 and you think you could just do everything on your own. So I would get clients all the time who were like 43, 45, 50, 39, whatever. And I would Inevitably, if they hadn't worked out ever or hadn't worked out in years, they couldn't do basic things like reach straight up above their head. Yeah. Literally. Take a 45-year-old who doesn't work out at all, have them hold a dumbbell, and have them fully extend above their head. And what you'll see is a shit ton of compensation in the lower back. You'll see all kinds of dysfunction in the shoulder, in the neck. Have them do their own form long enough, and they'll hurt themselves. That's how bad the movement is. I have, And then when they get to like 60 and 70... Holy cow, like I would get 60 and 70 year old clients who would get so excited because I would get them to the point where they could reach above their head because they couldn't even do it. They couldn't even straighten their elbow. It was like they were just like right here and they couldn't reach things in, in high areas. So yeah, not moving is, is one of the absolute worst things you could possibly do. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, I think 
there's studies that sh- that compare sitting in terms of threat to your health to smoking cigarettes. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, I've seen those, yeah. you know, yeah. where it's almost it, as bad as, it is. as, as smoking. It's very close to being yeah. as bad. Do you, have you guys ever trained a client and had them like, especially an older client, had to leave or not work out because they hurt themselves and then you see them like a month later? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. just completely deteriorated. Like, yeah. Scary, right? It's, it's tough, man. Yeah. To keep, to, to see that because it's, it's frustrating for them and you just see like it was only a few weeks and, and it's like you're starting all over again. Yeah, I had one lady who I trained. I might, I'm sure I've told this a long time ago, but she was in her early 70s and wonderful woman. Her daughter brought her to me because she needed you know, more strength. She was quite deconditioned. She couldn't move very well. So I trained her for, I want to say about two or three years. So we trained for a while. Very basic, very, very basic. Like the first stuff that we would do would be like just practicing standing up from a chair, right? Like that was her first exercise. And over the course of three years, like she didn't become some fitness fanatic and I didn't make her like this super mobile bodybuilder, but she was, you know, significantly better than how she started. Then she slipped in the shower and she broke uh, her leg. So she breaks her leg. So now she can't get out of bed. She can't move. So she's got this cast not coming in, not coming in. Next thing I know, her daughter calls me and is like, look, I'm paying for someone to take care of my mom right now. Can't afford a trainer anymore. So she's, you know, she's, if we can afford it later, she'll come see you, but I don't think she's gonna come see you for a while. So I said, okay, no problem. It was something like seven or eight months later. So it wasn't even a year later. So leg is healed and everything. I'm at the grocery store and I see her. Her name's Barbara. I see her. First off, when she used to come see me, she did have poor posture, but she could still walk relatively upright. I see her in the grocery store. She's almost completely horizontal with a walker, like really bad, bent over. She's walking with her daughter. Her daughter's walking around with her in the grocery store. So I call her out like, hey, you know, Barbara, hey. And she kind of looks up at me and she's got this very confused look on her face. And I'm like, hey. And her daughter says, hey, hey, mom, do you remember Sal? Do you remember Sal? And she goes, no, no. And my heart just crushed because she had, and I remember when I when I was training her, there were definitely signs of dementia that mm-hmm. were starting to happen, mm-hmm. but they were really really subtle. And the only reason why I could tell is because you know I spent a lot of time with her. I trained her three you know three days a week or so, and we would have all these conversations and stuff. And, and she would ask me every once in a while she'd ask me a question uh, you know that she had asked me like a week or two ago. So I'd say, oh okay, I think maybe she's having a little bit of dementia, but wasn't like if you just met her you wouldn't notice. <clears throat> Eight months later, because she couldn't move, because she had broke her leg and she was bedridden and because Mm. she didn't exercise Mm -hmm. anymore, Mm -hmm. her posture destroyed, completely deteriorated, didn't even recognize me anymore. And that was terrifying, absolutely terrifying. So so make no mistake, no movement is a very, very dangerous Oh, it will accelerate poor health for sure. Absolutely. Next question is from Carmen Alessa. I'm wondering what a woman should do to boost their testosterone level naturally. More testosterone would be nice for building muscle, but I'm sure females should aim for something different than men. What natural things can a woman do to get their hormones on point? I don't think it's it's necessarily that women should aim for something different than men because women in general are going to be it's going to be challenging for a woman to to promote more testosterone naturally, right? Obviously, uh, you wouldn't want to take something synthetically to to yeah. try and do that because, but a woman the the most optimized natural woman is never going to have even as much as like the average male does testosterone. No, they have a little bit of testosterone. Right. So you, you could, you want to do all the similar stuff. And we talk a lot Mm -hmm. about uh, that on this show right now of all, you know, sleep and sunlight and, you know, lifting heavier weights and um, the juve light. I mean, that's why, why can't they, can they use a juve light? Yeah. All these things could potentially help them. Yeah. If you're a woman, you don't, necessarily want to try to increase your testosterone levels. First off, that's not, it's kind of a difficult thing to do for a woman. And remember, testosterone is the male hormone. It's literally what turns a fetus uh, into, into a male, um, you know, signal through the, obviously the, the, your, our DNA, but it, it, it's what turns us into a male. If a woman has high testosterone levels, like a man, she will masculinize. She'll start to develop masculine features, grow hair on her face, um, clitoris will actually grow uh, as if it's trying to become a penis. Voice will lower. So a lot of things will happen with a woman. You don't want to, 
unless you have no testosterone, which may affect your libido, um, that may be more the result of, a, of an imbalance between mm. estrogen and progesterone. Those are the hormones that you really want to watch or have in balance uh, if you're a woman. Having those be out of balance, and the more common one to be out of balance is estrogen, the one that, you know, they'll call it estrogen dominance, right? Where your body is either sensitive to estrogen or your progesterone is too low, so the balance is off, or you have too much estrogen. This is where you get side effects, you know, and I, I pulled up a list here of things. So I want to make sure I, I covered them all. Like you'll get hair loss and thinning of hair, depression and anxiety, mood swings and irritability, mm. trouble falling asleep, uh, PMS is much worse, breast tenderness uh, or uh, fibrocystic breast, uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome and ovarian cysts. That's, a, that's also from estrogen dominance. Endometriosis, fibroids, infertility, uh, low libido, water retention, bloating, fat gain, accelerated aging, and so on. Estrogen dominance can even be a risk factor mm. uh, for cancer. So that's really what you want to look for when you're a woman. Men are the ones that look for low signs of low testosterone because when our hormones are off, it's that's the that's the that's the easy one to kind of to watch and see what's going I on. I see. So it's more progesterone and uh, estrogen, est- balance. estrogen balance that, that relationship. Yeah. So I wonder if that's what. So I had an issue with a lot of women when I first started training, and I think it had to do with the extreme low fat diets that was going on. And I would throw one of my female clients on a higher fat diet, and instantly they would feel a difference in their hormones. Balance out their hormones. Yeah. Like that was. So I think that's the first place I would normally check because this was more common than I thought it would be. And I think it's just because of the the fear of eating fat for so many women and men. Men, too, were avoiding it. I was avoiding it in mm-hmm. the, you know. That'll cause like, a hormone imbalance in men, too. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and so I think by keeping your, your healthy fats up is an, an easy thing to if look into. If you go too low in anything, right? So if, if, a, if a woman goes too low in carbohydrates for too long. So let's say you're a keto dieter and you do that for a long, long period of time. There's some evidence, you know, without ever coming out, right? There's some evidence that may, that shows that you may have thyroid uh, hormone issues uh, as a result of that. Um, low fat, for sure. You go really low fat, that is immediate. I mean, hormone issues. I mean, fat is a essential macronutrient. We need it. We need to eat it. Otherwise, we'll we'll die. Low, low, low protein can also cause. Uh, you know, hormone imbalances. And that's what's wrong with some of these like fad diets that we, we see people do is they, they're, they're so caught up on following the protocol of the diet instead of trying to listen to their body and maybe feed their body that way. And I mean, even ourselves, like, you know, I've been fought, we were following a ketogenic type of uh, protocol for a long period of time there. Man, I haven't, part of why I feel so good right now, I think is just the reintroduction of carbohydrates. Mm-hmm. Like sure I was eating them, but not like I'm eating them now, you know, now I'm back up to a healthy 250 grams of carbs, or which so isn't again. like a ton for a guy your size. Right, right. It's not a. It's cream. just more than a hundred than right. Probably eating yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's double, right? So that's a, it, it is a lot compared to what I was before, but it's not a crazy amount where I'm like shoveling all these carbs, and it's mm-hmm. just that I was so low for so long that it was affecting me hormonally. Yeah. So you know, if you lose your period, uh, that you know that'll obviously tell you that your hormones are probably not balanced out, and if you stay there long enough, um, you know, and because of dieting too much or because you're too lean then you can expect some some hormone issues. Another one is just really bad PMS. And, and it's funny because, you know, there's I think today we're we try to mask some of the bad symptoms of PMS. You see a lot of women getting uh, prescribed um, SSRI drugs and anti-anxiety medications and they take them right around PMS. In fact, that's one mm. of the more popular off the label type prescriptions. Uh, yeah. Pills, huh? Yeah, That's so yeah, so it's one of the more more common reasons why a doctor will prescribe an antidepressant off label. So not for like t- like regular depression, but like oh, your PMS is really bad. Here's a an SSRI. I want you to take this, you know, before you have like the, the week before you have your period and, and while you're hmm. on your period. And so women will actually take it to try to mask some of the symptoms of of PMS. Now PMS symptoms are are normal and natural. But the extreme ones could be a sign that your hormones are, yeah. are kind of out of balance. Like if you're a woman and, and when you PMS, like if your anxiety goes through the roof or you get really fucking dark, I'm talking like it's like a, a big dramatic change or you become super, super irritable um, or, you know, you can't sleep or you get hot flashes and all this other stuff. 
It's it, it could be a, just a hormone imbalance between estrogen and progesterone. This is much more common today because women are on birth control for so long. Yeah. And then when they go out, you know, here's the thing. Like if a guy takes anabolic steroids, what does his body do? Stops making testosterone because it's a negative feedback loop, right? Your body senses too much testosterone, stops making its own. Then you go off testosterone. It can take a while for your own natural testosterone levels to come back, right? <clears throat> Sometimes it could take a year or longer. Right. Especially, imagine, especially if you were on it for 10 years. Imagine if a guy was on testosterone for 10 or 15 years, like a lot of women are before they decide to go off. That's interesting with control. the antidepressants, though, because I, I, I just went in for a checkup and like the first thing they want to establish if, because I'm like, well, I'm low energy. I want to get all my blood work and all this stuff and kind of figure this out. First thing they're going for is like, are you depressed? Like this and that. Like mm -hmm. they're going through this whole protocol of just like, if I'm low energy, then, you know, an antidepressant might be the, the answer to that. That's like, right. right away. Now, aside from the obvious stuff of balancing out your hormones, uh, you know, having a, a good whole food based diet. Um, not going too hard in restriction, but also not eating a ton. Because if you have high, high body fat levels, then you may also get estrogen dominance because fat is a estrogen sensitive tissue. It could actually cause you to produce more more estrogen. Um, if you exercise properly, don't overwork, you get good sleep, and you're still having some of these issues, you may be either consuming too many, too much sugar because sugar can cause issues with uh, estrogen, alcohol, and caffeine are other are other ones. Caffeine can actually cause in some women spikes in estrogen and another women's drops in estrogen. So look at caffeine and I've had, you know, online clients where I'll have them eliminate caffeine and a lot of their symptoms will will go away. Hmm. Um, artificial fragrance, fragrances. A lot of these fragrances fragrances that you smell like candles that you may light that you think oh these smell this smells nice. It smells like, you know, cinnamon apple or whatever. If it's not a natural like you know, type yeah, of a candle. Yeah, what about like the makeup and the all, all those things, shampoos mm. and conditioners. Yeah, and they all have xenoestrogens, which are chemicals that uh, that have like a weak affinity for the estrogen receptor. That means that they they don't necessarily give you these strong estrogenic effects, but over time they can. So you you know start to look at those things, maybe eliminate those. Cleaning supplies, pharmaceuticals can do this. Here's some other things you can do if you have all all your ducks lined up and everything is going well. Increase your consumption of cruciferous vegetables. They contain, broccoli, for example, contains a compound called indole-3-carbonyl that when you consume it, your liver changes the type of estrogen metabolites that you produce into the less active forms. So if, you have, if you're estrogen dominant or you have these symptoms, eating more broccoli may actually balance you out. Or you can supplement. You can actually buy indole-3-carbonyl. And then the stronger version of that it's called DIM, but I will say this, before supplementing with something like DIM, which is a really strong, natural, over-the-counter kind of estrogen, you know, not blocker, but, you know, balancer or whatever, make sure that's what the problem is because you will be messing with your hormones by taking that. Yeah, it sounds like this person is not really trying or it has a problem as much as they, they know the correlation between yeah. testosterone and building muscle and they're looking yeah. to naturally I mean, boost it. I mean, Carmen follows us and we've seen her page before and she's very fit, but she's also shredded. Mm. And so what I would say to Carmen, for you in particular, if you want to do things to naturally balance out your hormones, I would say try gaining a little body fat because right. you're shredded right now. Go on a bulk and lift some heavy weights. Yeah, let, she's probably around 10% body fat. She's got a six pack and everything. I'd oh, say wow. let your body fat get up to about 15, 60, which is still lean. You're not, you're not going to be like overweight or anything. You're still very lean. Push your body fat up to 15, 16% and leave it there for a little bit and then see how you feel and, and how your hormones respond. Next question is from Machi Dog. How do you deal with your spouse or partner's level of need when they far exceed your own? My husband requires so much more attention and accolades than I do, and he seems to be getting worse as the years roll on. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Mind pump relationship yeah, advice. I know. This, I love when we come out at, as experts. I know this. I know all the like the the psychologists and, and fucking counselors and therapists oh, that listen man. to us cringe all the yeah. time. Like, you are not a professional. You should have, eh, well, fuck. We yeah. aren't. We're not. No. We're not. We start but with guess that. what? You asked us. Guess what? It's <laughs> our show, so we're going to answer the discussion. We're going to give our opinion anyway. Uh, I think you need to have him deadlift three times a week. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, a, a great book for this. I know we mentioned it on the you know the episode with Sex with Emily. I think um, this for this exact type of a question is 
uh, five love languages, right? Mm. Um, I, I think that's, I think it's really important uh, to, and even if you don't read the book, at least get the concept of it and understand uh, the, the meaning behind it is that, you know, typically we all have, there's five major love languages and each of us have one or two that are, now you could be a collect a collection of all of them, but you have do, a, typically a dominant uh, one or two and you know, it could be that if you're saying that he needs accolades, so that's affirmation, right? So he needs words of affirmation uh, from you. He could also, it could be services too, things that you do for him. So maybe mm-hmm. those are the two things that he needs. He likes affirmation. So tell him how good he is and whatever, all those things. And then also do things for him, which could incorporate cooking or cleaning or helping him out with certain things. Like these can all be examples of stuff that you could potentially help help him with as far as the the love languages. Now, where this becomes challenging for partners is when neither one of those two are yours. When yours may be gift receiving and something else. And so this is where I see the most conflict with couples is when they they, they don't seem to recognize that your love languages are completely different. Now, that doesn't right. mean that you can't be incredible partners. Katrina and I have completely opposite love languages. It's just you have to learn to have empathy. And it may seem very one-sided because maybe he doesn't know specifically what yours are and for him to contribute, you know, in that direction a little bit more. And it seems like, you know, you're putting a lot of effort and emphasis in trying to like accommodate uh, what seems to be very needy. Whereas like maybe you're not communicating what you actually need effectively. Right. Well, here's, and here's a weird one. So here's, here's it. And this is an area where Katrina and I had to work on like, uh, mine is gift receiving and it goes stems all the way back to my childhood and my history and stuff like that. So, um, I, and I typically as a single guy, I bought myself stuff. I buy myself gifts. That's why I like to buy things. That's part of it because I like, I like things. Right. And so for Katrina, hers is touch and feel, and that's a, a big strength to her. So she's incredibly, uh, touchy and feely and loving. So as soon as I walk in the door, you know, she's made, she makes the effort to make sure she kisses me and looks at me and holds me. And if we're sitting next to each other, she's always rubbing on me and massaging me. And I love all that stuff and appreciate it, but I don't need it. And I don't, and in my head, I'm not counting it as love, if that makes sense, right? So it's not registering in my brain as she's loving me. But if she gets me a gift, like it, it registers as she's, she's loved me. So right. What happens is a partner ends up doing what their own love language, what they that they want for themselves. They end up doing that a lot for their partner, and in their head, you're loving them a lot because you're doing the things that you want in return. But what you don't realize is that's not their language. So for them, all that effort and work that you're putting in towards, you know, quote unquote, loving them, they're not receiving it the same way that you want. So then if that's where people miss and they don't realize it, it's like. You know, that's because you love that way, because that's the way you like to be loved, doesn't necessarily mean that that's what he's looking for. Mm -hmm. So learning to understand that and then to be okay with, okay, I know it's easier for me to love him. So, and for example, for me, going back to my struggle, like I struggle with the um, affirmation thing. I'm terrible at telling Katrina how beautiful she is, how smart she is, how much I love her, how much she does for me and those things like that. I'm terrible at that. And so... I have had to put in. Now, what I am is I'm a major provider. I buy her gifts all the time. Like I do all that stuff and she gives two shits about that. So if you can imagine, I'm a guy who was, you know, for a while there, like it was like every week I was coming home with new clothes for her or flowers or gifts or things like that. And I'm in my head, I'm thinking all the time, like I'm fucking totally loving this woman. But then at the same time, she's feeling deprived. And, and so it's like, what the fuck? How could she get feel deprived? I feel like I do so much for her. Well, that's because I'm doing the things that are from my love language and the things that I love, I'm really not loving her the way that she wants mm. to be loved. So I think it's important that you make this connection. I think it's a great read if you haven't read the book. Yeah, I think too sometimes he may, you know, your spouse may be feeling very insecure. He may be feeling very, very insecure about you and the relationship and so just wants more affirmation that you're, you know, that you love him, that you're secure with him, that you want to be there with him. And I've seen this happen uh, many times with clients where I'll train, you know, a guy or I'll train a girl and then they start to get fit, but their spouse doesn't work out and I'll train them for a year or two years. And, you know, when you, you guys know this, when you train clients, you, you talk about everything, right? Because you become friends, you see them yep. for hours every week. And I'd hear them talk about, this was actually a common thing. This exact question was actually quite common where they'd be working out with me for a year or two, their body's changing, they're feeling better, they have more energy. Now they're doing things that they weren't doing before and then their spouse ends up 
requiring much more. They become more needy. They need more attention. They need more. And it's like, what's going on? It's like, well, they're insecure because you, your value has gone up. They've, they've perceived your value at a, at a particular place, right? Like, okay, you were 20 pounds heavier before. You weren't as outgoing before. You didn't have as much confidence before. Now you're 20 pounds leaner. You've got more confidence. You've got more energy. Your value has increased. Their value, their perceived value has stayed the same. They now will feel start to feel insecure. That's a really good that's a really good point and really really common. And very and, common. And then imagine that with them being off on their languages and it can really compound that. Oh mm-hmm. dude, I mean so that I could, mean that could be why she feels this way and why it's getting increasingly it, worse is because you may be increasingly increasing, your, your value may be going up. Right. And he could know? be staying the same or even going down, yeah. right? Imagine, if he's getting more unhealthy or who knows where he's I have no idea about yeah. his career what's going on with him there but if he's not growing at the same speed that you're growing mm. as an individual then well, absolutely imagine if you're just a regular person let's say you're just some regular dude and then you somehow i don't know you're at a, you're, you're in la and you run into beyonce right let's say she's single and all of a sudden you guys hit it off and now she wants to date you now you're dating beyonce right the level of insecurity you may have because you're dating beyonce is probably going to be a lot higher right and you may come across as more needy what are you doing right now? Do you love me? Are you sure you want to be with me? Why do you want to be with me? Because you perceive their value as, as so much higher. This happens with work, where one person maybe starts to succeed at work and the other person not so much. Uh, this may be more common if a, if a woman starts to get very successful because guys tend to get insecure about that, right? If they're, especially if their wife or girlfriend is more successful than them monetarily. This happens with bodies. Mm-hmm. If, you're, if you become more fit, or it may be that your spouse or your boyfriend or girlfriend doesn't increase their value, but your your perceived value decreases because of something that happened to you, like you lost your job, or you gained weight, or maybe you're feeling depressed. That causes a lot of problems as well. I mean, imagine you're with somebody and you are a particular way, and then you go through a rough patch where you feel like shit, or you gain weight as a result of it. Now you're very insecure about the other person, and it can come across as very needy. Now, the irony of all of this, the irony of this is being super needy and needing a lot of that information doesn't necessarily help anything unless it's communicated well. It doesn't help and in fact may actually hurt a situation because if you do have that other other partner and they are increasing their value and now you're asking them all the time and coming across as needy, 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 you may actually be bringing your own value down yeah, yourself. Yeah, you may be pushing them away for sure. You may be pushing them away. Yeah, because yeah. confidence is attractive, and it's oh, co- yeah. it's attractive in both sexes, men and women, right? And it's unattractive the opposite uh, as well. So. Yeah, and hopefully he's picking up on that, and then you know, like that's that's something like internally just needs to kind of get self motivated to, um, you know, pour his energy in elsewhere, you know, and like pick up on that feedback because that's something like with, between partners you need to maintain a certain level of communication where it's like if i feel like i'm annoying being annoying and pestering my partner you know i have to i have to read that and i have to understand that that's that's a problem that's something i need to pull back assess you know my my own insecurities and assess myself and pour myself into something constructive and that's really difficult for a lot of people to understand and and, and reflect on on what they're putting out there mm-hmm. like that. It's so funny because, you know, there's certain categories of, of, of clients that you get as a personal trainer, and there's these common categories or common reasons why people are hiring you. Like one of them is like, I want to get in shape for my wedding. You know, another one is like a high school reunion or there's a lot of them, right? They're kind of common, like where you hear them a lot. One of them, and they wouldn't say this, but as you get to know them, you could figure this out. One of them was you could, the person is, thinking about leaving a relationship so they're going to hire a personal trainer and start to get in shape. You know how often that what that happens? <laughs> yeah. It's actually pretty crazy yeah. where the person comes, either they just got divorced or things are kind of rocky yeah, so now yeah. they're working out to try to improve their value because yeah. oh, they're thinking about bouncing or whatever. Sure. Happened all the time. Yep. Next question is from Stephanie K. Nutrition. What is the favorite place you've ever traveled to and why? Mm. Hmm. Depends, right? So I have... I have like one of my favorite places I've ever been. I've been to Paris and Paris was uh, amazing, but that was because I had never been uh, really outside of the U.S. Uh, I don't really count Mexico. Um, 
And that was an incredible experience for me because I didn't realize how little history we have here. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's just when you even even when you go places that have been around. for Yeah, we're a new country when, we, you, when you look at all the rest of the country. Yeah, really. And so uh, that was a, a real major experience for me to walk around and, and find myself just like staring at architecture and buildings. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't yeah. think that would be that big of a deal, but I really, really in, enjoyed that. So Paris was an, an amazing experience for me. Um, now, I am. But I'm more like a guy who wants to go somewhere. I work a lot. I grind hard. And so, you know, traveling all the way over to Europe, it can be a taxing and tiring thing of the flight over there and trying to get to places and do things. So it, if I'm in that kind of a mood, then that's a uh, was an amazing experience. Mm. But if I'm in my normal mood, which is when I go on vacation, I want I want room service. I want the top-notch food. I want beach. I want like... So Jamaica was one of my favorite places that I've ever been for that. I stayed at the uh, the Royal Plantation, which isn't, I forget what movie that's in, but it's uh, probably one of, if not the the nicest hotel in Ocho's, Ocho Rios in, in Jamaica. And it's just, everything's red carpet treatment. And the, the hotel was amazing. The room that I was in was amazing. The, the beach that we had was private. The service there was incredible. The sh- the chefs that were on the on the uh, resort were amazing. There was like a couple of these chefs were like famous for for their dishes and stuff. And so that for me was uh, probably two of the my favorite places mm. that I've I've ever traveled to. For me, it would be either Nice, which was in France, which was a long time ago, but gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous beach town, incredible food. People were great. The, I mean, it was just it was a great place to visit. The other one is going to sound kind of you know cliche or whatever, but I really enjoyed Kauai. I had a fucking great time there. It's like obviously beautiful because it's an island, but we did a lot of like hiking and stuff. So we saw Waimea Canyon. We did some of the uh, Kalalau Trail. We did. We went on these ATVs where they filmed uh, Jurassic Park. Um, we did a few other things, and it was just it's like amazing outdoor stuff but also amazing beaches and super chill kind of laid back attitude and then the food which was the fish was just incredible i had such a great time there in fact i i think hawaii is going to be a place that i I, a staple place that i go to Mm -hmm. now because i was i just was so and the only reason why i didn't go before is because everybody goes there so like ah let's try something different or whatever no man i see why everybody goes there you know what i mean it's fucking amazing it's gorgeous that's funny. I haven't actually been that many places, to be honest. Like, I've been to Canada, and I've been to, you know, obviously, like, uh, like Cabo and um, Hawaii. I've been to, to Kauai as well. So that was definitely one of my top ones as well. Um, did all the, you know, everything you could do on the island, and we pretty much did that. And uh, Well, this just, year you're going to. Well, the, 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 this year, yeah. So this year, like, for my wife and I's, 10 year anniversary we just wanted and she's very very much more traveled than me and and has been pretty much everywhere in europe and um it, it's cool because so she has like a lot of german heritage and and actually knows and, and speaks german so that's something in the future that you know what we're doing right now is kind of like retracing a lot of our heritage and so um this trip was going to be about scotland ireland and um i've actually I have been there before, which I, I, I kind of don't count it because I went with my brother and it was like a last minute thing. We had no money and we, we caught this thing like this is way before like um, a lot of the the um, websites were up for like, you know, cheap deals on flights. And so we were basically on standby on this thing called like Air Hitch. And it was like we we were we were stuck in a hostage in um or hostile, hostile hostage, <laughs> Holy hostage cow. situation. This we were held by a, gunpoint. Yeah. yeah, this story took a crazy turn. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was a, yeah, you need, a hostile. You, need, you needed Miss America. <laughs> 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 Come save me. Yeah, so we we're actually in a yeah in a hostel in in L A for like two days, just waiting to get on a plane. Oh, what's a hostel like in L A? Horrible, <laughs> yeah, a bunch of bunch of hippies, dude, <laughs> smelly hippies. And then and so then we flew over into France, which is where we ended up in Paris, which was just like basically we're waiting to get on another flight to get to uh, England, and so it was just this really rushed like. 
I got a little bit of a sense of the landscape and was able to see some sights and stuff. But like, I was like, man, I just really want to spend good time and like, like see things and like, you know, retrace kind of our historical, uh, you know, steps and, and mm. family and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, so that's, I'm really, really looking forward to that. And so we'll see. You, awesome. came, you came to one of my favorite spots, Cabo. Or, Cabo I love too. Cabo's amazing. Yeah. It's just yeah. because it's only a three hour flight. And it's Mexico. Like people don't really talk about it much, but man, yeah. we're that place that we all went together. I mean, that's a, a, a we a, love that. Oh man. It was so chill and relaxing. Like that's and, me. Like, yeah. To me, that's my, like not, it's not for everybody. Like I know Sal's probably more adventurous, likes to go out and do more stuff or I don't think we even, I left, like both. I don't know if we left, yeah. left, left the house. I <laughs> really. see. I'm totally cool. Not leaving. If it's a, an environment like that yeah, like yeah. it's perfect but yeah like i there's some adventure in me still like to to go kind of so this will be kind of different yeah. than that but yeah i i fully enjoyed Cal- i like Cabo. both one day one day i want to go i want to take you guys if we can all go to like sicily mm-hmm. and southern italy and the mediterranean and you could i mean it's just at the culture is incredible the Absolutely food we can do that is bro. amazing I'm and a then grown up i can make those and decisions it's <laughs> it's, uh, it's so cool when you go to i don't uh, have to ask my parents yeah. it's so cool when you go to an old country uh, like Italy, where you'll be like you'll be in Rome, and you'll just be like, oh, there's a something that's two thousand years old right yeah. there, and there's something that's a thousand years old, and yeah. there's even places like that in Sicily where there's Greek ruins in certain towns in Sicily. I would love, yeah, I, I, I definitely want to go in the Mediterranean, spend a lot of time there, and see all those structures and mm. all the old ancient civilization stuff. Oh. Like, I want to take Courtney to um, uh, Egypt at some point and do one of those like really crazy tours where they get like the sphinx and like they give you all the back history and stuff so yeah, yeah. The, the place i would love to travel that i really want to travel to that has been on my mind for i don't know 20 years for whatever reason japan mm. i've and i told you guys i want to go to japan yeah, that doesn't even make my top 10 i know i'd love to go to japan that's thank you finally yeah, yeah, so we got yeah. three three out of four so you're outnumbered i know <laughs> doug i know doug is down i want to go I love to that japan col- the culture of yes it. yeah they're yeah, it's 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 fascinating, especially you know like like samurai and, and like just going through oh. all those like gardens. And it's so beautiful. Oh, I love Japanese culture. I want to go see some sumo fights. I want to see judo. <laughs> I want to have food in Japan. I want to go to Tokyo. I want to go to a big city. And I want to go. Where, where were you? What what town were you in, Doug? Or what were you near? I was near Osaka, which is south of Tokyo, oh. second largest city in Japan. See, we got to go to Japan, dude. Mm. We got to go to Japan. And Japan, China, not- I don't know, man. I just I'm like. Crowds and crowds of people like make me nervous. You know what I mean? Isn't like, Japan little, like that too? Is it depends where you go? I thought it was a little less. That's I don't know. Yeah, though. it depends where you're at. Yeah, because yeah. where where you lived, Doug, did, wasn't it more rural? Yeah, I was outside of the city about forty minutes by train. It was very rural out there. Oh, okay. Yeah. But so there's all types of different terrain in Japan. It's very diverse. I want I, I, the culture is what fascinates me the most. Like mm-hmm. the the karaoke bars and how dude that'd be awesome well yeah. no over there it's different doug would tell me like the businessmen would get together go to these bars and get fucking blitzed yeah like they'd get smashed at and after after work or whatever it's just an interesting it's an interesting culture some of the, some of the it's the hostess bar yeah there you go <laughs> the hostess bar it's a karaoke bar but you have a girl or girls in short skirts serving you whiskey oh, okay. or whatever well, i forgot about that part yeah yeah so I think you'd like it, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> I see why Doug was a fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. excellent. Yeah. <laughs> well, check this out. We have guides that are free. These are guides on particular topics like build your chest, build your legs, build your calves, get a flat stomach. Uh, you know how to do high intensity interval training properly. Get any guide you want for free. Go to mindpumpfree.com. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.